Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Jesus is Rock Ministries, where we preach Christ and Christ crucified. This is your servant Lillian, and today we are going on fasting the believer. We are looking at part 38. The spirit lives in you. The spirit lives in you. Please stay tuned to the end of the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and smash that notification button so we'll never miss a thing we post. Let's get into it. The spirit lives in you. Jesus promised us that after he has died, risen again, and ascended to heaven, God would send the Holy Spirit to live inside his people. If you are a believer, then the Bible calls you God's temple because God's spirit dwells in you. As children of God, we literally have the spirit of God living inside of us. When you think about God, where do you think God is? If you are like most of us, you may say in heaven, and you will be right. But you would only be partially right. If you are a believer, God's Spirit, also known as the Holy Spirit, lives within you. That is why the Bible says that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20 says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? Whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at the price. Therefore, honor God with your body. The Holy Spirit makes all the difference. Knowing that the Holy Spirit lives in you can be life-changing. It lets you know that Christianity is not just a religion. It lets you know that Christianity is more than a set of doctrines and beliefs. It lets you know that God is much closer to you than you may realize. Philemon chapter 1 verse 4 to 6 says, I thank my God making mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Paul reminded Philemon how he prayed for him to the end that the communication of his faith becomes effectual for the acknowledging of every good thing that is in him in Christ. This implies that a believer will be effective to the degree that he has precise knowledge of the things that belong to him in Christ. Romans chapter 8 verse 9 says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is not of his. An important concept of study for the believer in Christ to be well acquainted with is the indwelling of the Spirit. This can be seen from the promises made in the Old Testament books of the Bible and the fulfillment of the same explained in both the four Gospels and Epistles. In the light of this, the believer ought to carefully pay attention to this important detail, as a failure to do so may lead to the believer looking at these promises without knowing that they have been fulfilled. Also, in understanding this, it is important to bear in mind the several concepts related to the indwelling of the Spirit. This includes concepts such as the new birth, the gifts of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, being filled with the Spirit, the promise of the Spirit in the Old Testament. We can find them in uh, Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 25 says, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I clean you. Verse 26, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my status. And ye shall keep my judgments, and do them. In Joel chapter, 20, uh, chapter 2 verse 28 to 29, the Bible says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see vision, and also upon the servants and upon the uh, unmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. 
we find the above two prophecies in Old Testament books of the Bible concerning the Spirit. Note that Joel's prophecy is about the outpouring of the Spirit upon all flesh. This was pointed out by Peter in explaining the event uh, of the day of Pentecost. In Acts chapter 2, verse 16 to 18, the Bible says, But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, say God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my unmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. So Joel's prophecy was explained by Peter as fulfilled by what happened in the day of Pentecost. This Joel's prophecy was concerning the spirit, but we must pay close attention to what was said. As seen above, the prophecy of Joel was explained by Peter with respect to the events on the, uh, on the day of Pentecost. They spoke with tongues and prophesied. We can say, therefore, that the prophecy of Joel was concerning the outpouring of the spirit. This was fulfilled from the day of Pentecost. However, this is not about the indwelling of the spirit which Ezekiel's prophecy deals with, as we shall subsequently see. The Bible refers to God as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Although the Bible says God is one, it also refers to God as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Peter referred to all three, Father, Spirit, and Jesus Christ in the same sentence. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, strangers in the world, scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, uh, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and sprinkling by his blood, grace and peace be yours in abundance. That is 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 1 to 2. Galatians chapter 1 to 1 says, Since the Bible says God is one, since the Bible says God is one, yet it also refers to him as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Many people who use the term the Trinity to describe him, saying he is one being of three co-equal person and aspects. Some describe him as being unique with individuality and personality that is manifested in three persons. The Father, we find in Galatians chapter 1 verse 1, the Son, or Jesus, we find in John chapter 20 verse 28, the Holy Spirit we find in Acts chapter 5 verse 3 to 4. When you read about the Holy Spirit, you are reading about God himself. That is why we refer to the Holy Spirit as a person or personage, using terms as such as he or him, not it. How does the Holy Spirit help believers? Since the Holy Spirit lives in you, he knows what you need. Here are some way, ways he is ev uh, available to help you. He gives you power and helps you to, to tell others about Jesus. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes up on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That is Acts chapter 1 verse 8. The Holy Spirit gives you hope. Like we can read in Romans chapter 15 verse 13, the Bible says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with, with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit teaches you, like we can see in John chapter 16, verse 13, the Bible says, But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. The, the Holy Spirit helps you in your weaknesses and uh, intercedes for you in prayer. That is Romans chapter 8, verse 26. The Bible says, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray for.
but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. The Holy Spirit helps you overcome sin. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 says, So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. In order to receive the power of God, one does not need a religious formula, but rather a relationship with a person. When a farmer grows crops, his desire is to receive its fruit, but his relationship is with the plant. It is the plant that the farmer sows, waters, and takes care of. Even though he is waiting for the fruit, he knows that without the plant, there will be no fruit. The disciples also desired the fruit of the Holy Spirit, but for that, it was necessary for them to relate to him as a person. Before seeing the divine manifestation, the believer would learn to love, serve, adore, and respect the Spirit, wait in him, and form a relationship with him. Galatians chapter 3 verse 2 says, I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? If we analyze what Paul says in Galatians chapter 3 verse 2, I only want to learn this from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? We realize that this is a rhetorical question. No one receives the Holy Spirit based on what they do. We experience salvation freely. There is no reason to relate to God differently in our experiences with the Holy Spirit. It is also a grace-based experience. In the same way that we receive Christ without doubting whether he will enter our lives or not, we should receive the Holy Spirit by faith and believe that he will respond to our request without delay. Luke chapter 11, chapter, uh, chapter 11 verse 13 says, Jesus uh, uh, says, If you then who have evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So you see here that Jesus is skillfully expressing the essence of this to us. This is a very, very, very important experience for a believer. And if you never received the, the Holy Spirit, if you didn't do it, my sister, my brother, I beg of you, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you do so. Just receive it like you receive, uh, you receive your, uh, your deliver, you, you receive your, your deliverance. Receive him like the day you, you accept Jesus in your life. Please do it. Because with the Holy Spirit in you, you will be more powerful. You will be more smart. You, you will walk in the Spirit. You will walk in the truth of the things of God. You will never be confused. You will know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it by His, by his power, with His help. Please, brothers and sisters, never forget the, the Word of God is our final authority. This is your servant, Lillian. Shalom.